Hey, welcome back to Fran Design Studios. I'm Stephanie Brandenburg, and today we are going to show you the Art Weave. The Art Weave was something really fun that we discovered in our store uh, in uh, downtown Cedar Rapids, and we are cutting up or ripping panels and then layering them back up. This is a no sew technique, and then as we move forward, I'll show you how to incorporate some sewing projects in future projects into this same technique. This will be the one that the project we're doing today. This is our beautiful poppy fabric, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this and then staple it onto your own canvas. So once you have this all completed, you can just simply hang it on the wall. And we do have kits for this as supplies last. So at frondesignstudios.com. All you need for this project are three identical panels. This is what you'll get in your kit, three total. One is your guide to help you know where to put your woven pieces. Uh, the canvas you'll have to purchase separately. And then make sure you have just simple sewing supplies on hand, as well as a staple gun. We're going to take the plastic off our canvas. All right, so here we have our canvas. We're just gonna lay our first image here over it. This is simply operating as a guide. This, when you're in this stage, you can decide what you wanna focus on. You wanna bring this down a little bit and have the tops show. You can just kind of position it wherever you'd like. Obviously make sure you have enough fabric here to make sure you can get around the canvas. And we're simply going to staple it to the canvas. This is our guiding panel. So initially what I'm going to do is wrap this so that it presents almost as a mitered corner. We just want to make it nice and tight. So we'll start there and then we're going to staple that fabric to our canvas. I've tried different staple guns. Make sure you get one that's easier because it's a little easier on your hands. This one is obviously going in pretty effortlessly. Work your way around the side. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be stapling our other pieces as we go, but this is a great way to get this all kind of your background all in place. At this stage, make sure you have it where you want it. Make sure it's nice and tight that'll give you more of an art look for your wall. I like to think of these corners like you're wrapping a Christmas present. So now we have our background ready to go. We're gonna set this to the side and we're gonna start with our next panel. You'll notice this is the same image, so we're not using two different fabrics, we're using the same image for this tutorial. I like to take my rotary cutter, you can use any rotary cutter that you choose. Lots of different kinds out there. For this particular tutorial, we're going to just simply make cuts at the bottom of our fabric. Doesn't matter what width. I like to do different size widths. It offers more interest in the design. But if you're somebody that wants them to be all equal, you can do it that way as well. So you can see that the cuts are made here at the bottom. This particular flower then will be ripped in a vertical manner. As I'm ripping, I also like to keep my pieces together so I know exactly that they're the right ones in place. You don't want to get them out of place. It'll mess up your design. So here you can see we have all of the vertical strips already ripped and ready to go. And now we're going to go to the horizontal ones. Same idea. We're going to just turn our fabric, go to the side of it, and make different size cuts. And now we'll rip those. I like to spritz it. And then I like to iron the pieces down. You don't have to do this but I find that it helps me just get more of the visual pattern of the fabric. And sometimes it curls when you rip it, and so this is a great way to flatten it again. So what I like to do, as you rip some of this, those threads can get kind of in your way, so I just like to go in and trim them down. It's nothing, it's again, personal preference. 
I just like to have some of that. You can do this at any point in the project. So I just like to start it before I do the weave. And as we do the weave, we'll go back and take more threads off. So we're gonna start with our horizontal strips. And you can see our image is right here. So we're going to use this as our guide and follow the image. I'm starting in the middle because I can build out. Since it's ripped, we're going to have some that will not fit on the canvas itself because we have space in between those pieces now. So now we have our horizontal strips set on our initial canvas and we are going to take each, the, uh, each other one, every other one, and peel it back. Notice that we are doing that back to the middle of the image. Now we're going to go to our vertical strips and we're going to place those as close as we can to the image. Again, we're starting in the center of the image and building out. Now you can see we have our horizontal strip coming back this way. We're going to flip the other one back. So what you want to think of is you're catching it. You're catching this back. Then we add our second vertical piece. And this is about, again, personal preference. You can snuggle it up as much as you want to to that initial piece that we placed. Again, we'll be peeling that back and, and putting every other one back over. Repeat this process every strip. You can see we have a couple pieces left here and we're not gonna make it along the whole canvas. So we're going to place this last strip here and he's just giving us a, like a placeholder until we turn it over to staple it. Now we're gonna repeat that same process on the other side. So remember when we were going through the center and we were kind of catching that, we're gonna start in the middle and pull that back. And then we'll pull back every other one. So now we're laying this one out here that's centrally located and we're gonna just repeat that process, the same thing we did on this side as the other side. So we do have some scraps left over and that's gonna be okay. Now I'm just pulling through to make sure I have the shape that I wanna have on this side, that everything's lined up the way I want it. Again, this is personal preference. I'm making sure like this guy's kinda of hanging off there that I can push him in a little more. Um, just kind of centering the project and getting it ready to staple. So now I kind of have it laid out the way I like it. I think I like how it's a little abstract here in the center. So we're gonna take, you can either take another canvas and place it on top of your image, or you can take a ruler, anything that's gonna give you the surface that you want to make sure when you flip it, you don't lose your pieces. So we're gonna flip it over. I'm lifting up all of these pieces here to make sure that we have everything in place after we flipped it. So double checking to make sure we have the same pattern 
going on. Some of these that are looser are coming up all the way around. Now I'm going to go ahead and just start stapling. I'm going to start in the, the lower area here and just make sure this is not going to be anything that's like totally perfect or pristine. We're just going to make sure we have everything in the way we want it to. I like to think of this part of the process as kind of basting. Make sure you're just kind of giving it a nice loose place to land. We're going to rotate that. I would still try to miter some of these strips if you can. Um, just try to think of that present, like you're wrapping it like a present. We can always come back and trim it when we're finished stapling. So this one I don't really have a miter on, so I'm just going to go right to the edge here. And that'll be different just depending on where you place your strips. So you'll notice here that we don't have a lot of extra like we had over here. That's okay. It's going to just be, you know, the way the project is laid out. So you don't have to worry about that. We still have enough that we can get behind the canvas and staple it. This is the last side. So what we want to do is make sure everything's taut. I kind of have a little extra strip here on the back, but I'm not going to pull it out because I don't want to disturb my pattern on the front. So we're just going to go ahead and staple that in and just kind of give a little tug. Make sure that's nice and taut. So do that also when you're on the bottom. When we were going through here and I was kind of just pulling those a little taut to make sure we don't have any ruffles or wrinkles in the fabric when we're finished. Again, personal preference if you want a nice tight art weave. This is the last strip, so I'm just going to make sure that I have it where I want it and I'm going to just kind of pull this one in. He's kind of sideways here. We're going to pull him in and kind of miter him too. Again, we can always go back and cut if we want to. I'll just snip that guy off. This also leaves it a little bit more flush. We don't want just a bunch of fabric in there if we're going to hang it on the wall. So then we turn our project over and it's beautiful. Nice and flat. You can always go back through, pick out these threads that might be on there. We have a nice abstract look. It's quite pretty. You have the option of, you know, doing a looser weave and having that background show. So some people like to play with that. That is always an option too, but we did a nice tight weave with the fractured flower look. And so now we can just go back and trim around the frame and we'll be ready to hang this on the wall. I'm just trimming this even with the frame. So we just get some of that bulk out from behind there. This is a great project to do with people that might be intimidated by sewing. Um, maybe they don't feel as comfortable with a machine, but this is a great way to kind of dip their toes into the fabric world and start creating with fabric for a no-sew art weave project. And there we go. You have your finished art weave all ready to hang on the wall. Thanks so much for joining me for this class. You can purchase kits for this project at frondesignstudios.com. The pattern is included with your kit. Or you can just buy the pattern and do it with any fabric you may have on hand. Thank you so much for joining me for this project. Remember, we'll be doing other projects with the same technique and adding different steps. So please like or subscribe to get notifications when those come out.